let's talk about how to gently reactivate your sticky clear slime. Clear slimes need a gentle touch when you're reactivating them, even if they're sticky, especially beaded slimes. And as you can see from the example that I gave there, this slime is definitely not liquid. It's just a little sticky. So you just dip your fingers in a little bit of activator and start to smush and fold it into the slime. This process is really important. I understand that the urge is just to pour a whole bunch of activator on there and get it activated as quickly as possible, but I do not recommend doing that. And you might be saying, Sasha, why? Why can't I just get it done quickly and get it over with so I can play with the slime the way I want it right now? The reason for this slime specifically is the beads. If you overactivate your slime very quickly, those beads are gonna go flying out and it will not be the slime maker's fault and it will not be the slime's fault. It will be your fault because overactivated slime cannot hold those beads very well. But if you use a light touch and a gentle hand and mix and fold between every single time that you add just the tiniest amount of activator, your slime will go back to perfect condition. What is perfect condition, you might ask? Well, that's a great question, but it is subjective. It feels different to everyone. There are people who like their slime slightly on the sticky side or tacky side, and there are people who absolutely want none of that involved. So it's up to you to play with your slimes and feel it out and get to know what your hands like. You may have heard the term slime hands around on the internet. That just means knowing how to move your hands the way you see me doing here so that even when the slime is slightly sticky, it doesn't stick to you. As long as you know how to move quickly and efficiently, it's not going to get completely attached to your hands. If you go back to the start of this video, you'll see where I was putting my finger in it and drawing it out slowly and it stuck to my hand. And then when I moved more quickly, it didn't. That shows that it's not too sticky and doesn't need a lot of activator, which is why I'm continuously just dipping my fingers in that little bowl of activator in the back there but I'm thoroughly pressing and folding it in, taking no chances that I'm gonna overactivate this. I have to test it in between each one because like I said, I don't want those beads to fall out. Now, I do wanna say slightly underactivated slime sometimes makes better bubble pops. And there has been a lot going around about like, how do you get your slime to make those fun bubbles on the video and yada, yada, yada. That might be a part of it. So if your slimes are constantly overactivated and you're finding that you're not getting the sounds that you want out of them, try letting them sit in the sun for a few, like maybe a day or two days to get just slightly underactivated, you might find that you like that better. But I hope that this tutorial helps in just showing you the slow and easy process Process. I know that it's like, oh, I just want it right now, but don't do it. Do it like this. I wanted to show it to you in real time. I know this is kind of long, but the real time part of it is important because I feel like if I speed it up or cut it, people are going to think it happened faster. This is literally the entire process of reactivating this slime that I hadn't touched and I want to say, mm, maybe four or five months. I made it on a live. You guys can remind me when it was made, but I haven't touched it or activated it since then. So. Here it is, and now it's back to normal.